Hello, hello, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg. I'm super happy that you're here. Today, I'm going to continue my reading of Speak From Within. I decided a few weeks ago that I'm going to just read for you the entire audiobook while I do this podcast. So if you have been wanting to improve your skills as a communicator, especially in live settings as we get back to live settings, whether or not you want to do it in an interview or a meeting or, or you might be presenting to thousands of people, if you want to improve your skills, this is the book for you. And right now, you can get it absolutely for free as far as the audiobook is concerned. Go back a few Thursdays and find the first little bit, the introduction, and listen ev to every Thursday episode. And by the time you're done, you're going to be able to have heard the entire audiobook. Why am I doing this? Because I want us all to be better communicators. I think communication is the key to so much. Most importantly, listening skills, because I think it's better, <laughs> we become better communicators when we listen than when we speak. But that's all back in chapter three. Today, we're going to do chapter four of the book. And it's uh, Speak From Within is the title of the book. And chapter four is On Being a Siren. Chapter four. On being a siren. Do you remember the myths of the sirens who entranced sailors out at sea? They weren't just beautiful, remember. In fact, the sailors first succumbed to the lure of the sirens' voices before they ever saw them in the flesh. The sirens enraptured the sailors with their glorious voices. And we can do that too. Not that I'm suggesting you enthrall a sailor and then drag them down to a watery grave or anything. Just that you too can engage your listeners with only the sound of your voice. Your voice, your body language, and your energetic presence play a role in communicating your message. The words themselves can even take a back seat because the more effectively you use your voice when you present, the more easily you will capture your audience's attention. How fabulous is that? As we develop our spoken voice, there are a few issues to think about. Whether you're about to reach out to a live audience or doing a pre-recorded podcast or interview, here are some questions to ask yourself before you engage on a physical slash sense level. First, are you warmed up to speak? Just like a marathon runner wouldn't dream of running a race without a warm-up, a speaker of any sort shouldn't present without first doing the same. Ideally, you want your mind and body prepared for whatever you ask of them. To warm up, run through the exercises in this video. And it is <laughs> a strange little HTTPS colon slash slash. It's a YouTube video, so it's Y-O-U-T-U dot B-E slash Z-G-7-T-J-W-N-L-I-I-G. And I'm going to actually put the link in the show notes just so you know. Copy the link or go to https colon slash slash isoldat.com slash speak hyphen book and see chapter four. It will loosen your breath and body and vocal mechanisms so you're ready to communicate. If you don't have access to the video, complete the following exercises. But first, be aware of your abilities today. If you feel any sense of discomfort while attempting any of these exercises, please use common sense and stop. Pull back and do only what you can. If you practice these exercises, chances are you'll increase your flexibility, balance, and strength. But remember to take care of yourself. Ready to begin? The warm-up. March in place. After about 30 seconds, begin to slow down. Feel your feet lift off the floor. When you lift off, lift the heel first, then the ball of your foot, and then your toes. And then put your foot down with the toes first, then the ball, and then the heel. Slow your steps down and sense the way your feet are standing on the floor. Separate your feet hip-width apart. You can find hip-width by running an imaginary line from the second toe of your foot through the center of the ankle, the center of the knees, to the hip points. Take a good stance and don't lock your knees. Roll your shoulders back and stand centered. Lower your head and elongate the back of your neck as if you were trying to see your belly button. Hold that stretch for a few seconds. Then, bring your head up through the center and look up. Don't scrunch the back of your neck. Rather, elongate from the front of your throat. And now come back to center. Bring your right ear to your right shoulder and pull down with your left arm. 
Come back through center. Bring your left ear to the left shoulder and pull down with the right arm. Make sure you keep breathing deeply and fully as you do this warm-up. Come back to center and interlace your fingers behind you. Push down and back to open up the chest and to deepen the breath further. Give yourself a big hug and look down. Breathe into your upper back so you can feel the expansion as you inhale and exhale. Release your arms. Use the tips of your fingers to lightly pat the top of your head. Rub your forehead, your eyebrows, and jaw hinge. Next, rub your cheeks, sinuses, nose, lips, and chin. Make a small face. Scrunch your features in. And then a large face. Open mouth, eyes, and nostrils wide. And repeat that three times. Put your hands on your belly. Take a deep breath into your hands and exhale. Feel your belly expand when you inhale and contract when you exhale. Breathe like this four times. After the fourth time, as you inhale, put your lips together and blow out through them to make the horse noise. Inhale again and put your lips together to make the horse noise one more time. Next time, inhale and vocalize as you blow out through your lips to make the motorboat noise. This is how you get the breath and the voice working together. Now release your arms and inhale deeply. As you exhale, open your mouth wide and yawn. Do that twice more and enjoy the satisfaction of a good yawn. Last, let's warm up your lips, teeth, tongue, and entire mouth. To do that, we're going to do tongue twisters. Say each one of the following tongue twisters ten times as quickly as you can. The first is minimal animal. The next one is red leather, yellow leather. Say it ten times as quickly as possible. Now let's unique New York. After that, do kinky cookie. The last tongue twister in the warm-up is rubber baby buggy bumper. As you get more facile with the tongue twisters, speed them up. At this point, you should feel awake and ready. Use this warm-up anytime you need to speak in front of people, and if you want a refresher on how to breathe into your belly, please see that video here. This is another URL, https colon slash slash YouTube, so Y-O-U-T-U dot B-E slash G-O-T-W slash capital R, capital R-Y-7 K-B-E. And I'm going to put it in the show notes too, so don't worry about it. You can access all of the supplemental videos at https colon slash slash com slash speak hyphen book slash. And remember, if you do this warm up, you will feel more free more confident, and more primed to shine. Once you have warmed up, practice saying something you know well, maybe the lyrics to a song or a favorite nursery rhyme or poem. Listen to yourself as you speak and ask yourself the following questions. Am I loud enough? Am I too loud? How jittery, breathy, or shaky is my voice? If my voice is shaky or breathy, what does that communicate? If I speak... <laughs> And sometimes even professional audiobook readers go blah, 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 and mess up. If I speak quickly, what am I saying? Can they catch all my words? Can I catch the words myself? If I speak slowly, what message am I sending? Do I know? Asking these questions and addressing the issues that come up will help you communicate efficiently and credibly. Additionally, if you're speaking to a live audience, you can gauge their level of engagement and attention. But if you are recording a podcast or a video where no live audience is present, you must prepare your voice, body language, and energy level to communicate your message optimally to an audience whose reaction you cannot gauge unless they give you specific feedback afterward. Know your audience. It's good to think about how you want to communicate your message and how you want your audience to receive it. But first, you must know your audience. If you're about to present to a group of teens who spend a ton of time playing loud video games, then you can present quickly and energetically. If your audience is mostly older people, you will likely want to keep things more measured than the speaking style that would engage a 14-year-old. These are extreme examples, but I want to convey the importance of doing that research beforehand. 
In addition to knowing the physical and socioeconomic characteristics of your audience, you can delve deeper to really customize your message. Particularly if you're about to meet and communicate with a smaller group, you can learn about them as individuals. You can discover their likes and their dislikes. You can pepper what you say with what they love. It's a seasoning of a sort. Yeah, <laughs> you see what I did there. Adding flavor to your interaction with your listeners. Let me give you an example. Back in the dawn of time, before the advent of the internet, and even before cell phones, really, I used to work for a company called The Information Prospector. The company did public records research on wealthy individuals for nonprofit organizations, and the nonprofits would then solicit philanthropic donations from these people. However, they didn't just go in and say, hey, give us money. They did it by knowing who those people were and connecting with them on a deeper and more personal level. And at the time, before Google or any other search engines, we researched newspaper clippings and read biographies and found the information that these nonprofits needed to optimize their interaction with these potential donors. For example, one time a public university hired us to help them solicit a donation from a business executive. So we did public records research report on him. And the research indicated that this guy loved this one particular sandwich from this one deli. So at their initial meeting, the university representatives made sure to bring in a pile of that particular sandwich. He noticed the gesture and gave them something like a $20,000 donation, in part because they had made him feel at home. The more you know about your audience, the more you can connect with them, and the more you have a symbiotic relationship. Nowadays, you don't have to go to the Library of Congress. You can Google the people you'll be speaking to. Learn who they are and what they do for fun, because knowing what they love allows you to see through their eyes and communicate from their perspective. Do that before you ever open your mouth. Go to Google, go to LinkedIn, find their Facebook pages. Do your due diligence. None of this is hidden information. It's in the public record, and it should inform how you'll interact with these people, how you'll communicate with them. Know who they are and use that information to connect with them. But, and this is a serious but, I don't mean that you should dig up and use the information in an inauthentic way. Be authentic. Be real. If your research turns up a subject you don't know anything about, be curious. Ask questions to get to know your audience better. And let them know you're interested in them. If you can find commonality, you can figure out a way to make your situation work. Mirroring. Once you've done your due diligence and you're up there in front of your audience, it's time to try this mirroring technique. First, assess your audience. Who are they? Evaluate their body language. Are they fidgeting or still? Are their movements small? Hesitant. Big, fast. If you can determine the general energy level and type of person in the room, mirror their movements and speech patterns if you can. Don't replicate and for sure don't mock, but do try to match the style of their movements and behaviors. They will feel more comfortable with you because you're behaving similarly to them and you'll have an easier time connecting with them. But again, and I can't stress this enough, I'm not inviting you to be fake or misleading. I'm simply inviting you to match the level of motion and energy you receive from the people you're talking to. If it's just one or two people, it'll be easier to mirror them. If it is a large group, I would advise you to move as comfortably as you can. Be authentic and try to connect with as many of them beforehand as you can. Certainly, not all people will move or behave identically. However, you can get the lay of the land before you speak and try to connect with and acknowledge as many people as you can while doing so. This achieves a twofold goal. First, it puts your audience more at ease. Second, if your audience seems relaxed, you will also breathe easier. That is a major benefit before you speak to present. Because if you're nervous, it'll show. Nervousness can give you a shaky or breathy quality. Your voice will quiver and you'll seem scared, even if you aren't. Luckily, there are a couple of easy steps to take to head off nervousness when you feel it coming on. First, take three deep breaths before you begin speaking. You might feel like an eternity is passing and people are looking at you like you've grown a second head, but there's nothing wrong with pausing in silence. People want to fill silences because they feel uncomfortable. Let's ask the question. Why? Why does silence generate discomfort? I would bet many of us have no good reason. Silence is preparatory. Silence is peaceful. 
Silence can be exciting and engaging. These are all good things, though many of us find silence frightening and anxiety-provoking. So take your time and breathe. Do a quick mental warm-up. You and your audience will be better for it. In fact, I like to invite the audience to do a warm-up with me when I come on stage to speak or perform. Often, they're off in their own worlds. They have worries or cares or stresses that might keep them from being here and now and ready to participate. Since I want maximum attention and participation, I invite them to stand and breathe with me. I also run them through a few short exercises so that we're all present and accounted for, as they say. The all-important opening line. Here's a quick technique I use at the start of any presentation. I stand in front of the group, I look around the room and make sliding eye contact with as many people as I can, and then I let everything fall silent. Once we're all hushed, I wait until the silence is just beginning to verge on uncomfortable. Then I change the energy of the room and turn it from discomfort into anticipation. I grin and shout, are you ready? The answer is always a resounding yes, and that's just what I want to hear. You will want to find your own opening line, but I recommend you find something that immediately engages your audience. Imagine you're inviting them all to play a game with you and let your enthusiasm spark their interest. Remember, if you aren't psyched about your topic, you can't expect them to be. Even if you're about to talk about the lackluster sales figures for last quarter's chartreuse-colored shoelaces or the history of Maltese toenail clippers, if you're excited about the topic, convey that excitement to your audience. And if you aren't excited, figure out a way to get excited. Find the humor in shoelaces. Put up a funny image in your PowerPoint deck. For example, if I absolutely had to give a presentation on shoelaces, I might start with an image of a pair of shoes hanging on a power line. Have you seen those? Ever wondered where they come from and why people do that? There are so many potential answers, and they range from someone playing a joke to a gang establishing its territory. However, despite what various sources say, there is no definitive answer. So, make this a way to engage your audience. Ask them if they know. Make it a guessing game. Make it funny. Offer a prize for the best answer before the end of the presentation. The prize can be a donut, by the way. It doesn't have to be a big item. People love contests they have a chance of winning. That donut will get them to think about laces in a new way, and it'll improve your presentation because they'll be with you. Pretty good work for a simple donut. That's part of your responsibility as a presenter. Do what you need to do to get and keep them with you. Sing a song. Tease them with a donut. Don't give them a chance to check out. Bring them in with your first breath, your first sentence, and they'll be with you. Or at least they'll be yours to lose rather than yours to struggle for. That is a much stronger and bolder place to be. I hope that you've enjoyed this chapter four in Speak From Within. I'm super excited about this chapter because that notion of preparation is super important. If you're about to speak to anyone for any reason, take a few minutes, move and loosen your body, get yourself into your breath, do a little bit of vocal warm up. It doesn't have to be big. It just has to be so that your body and your mind are not a limit to you in the message you're trying to convey. You want them, your body and your mind and, and everything else about you to be with you as you do this. If they're not with you, then you're carrying them along, and that is arduous. Just like you want to engage an audience, you want to engage your body and your mind in your message. If you don't, they're going to be, <laughs> again, yours to lose. And I would love to see you win. That's really all there is. All right. I hope that you've enjoyed today's episode. Uh, stay tuned next week. We're going to do another one. We'll be doing chapter five. And that is Let's Talk Loud. I'm excited about that one. As usual, this episode is brought to you by Brain FM. It's my favorite app. I'm using it like crazy. I love, 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 love it. I used it this morning to meditate like I do every morning. It wakes up my brain to help me do whatever it is I'm focusing on, whether I'm trying to recharge or whether or not I'm trying to do deep work or focus on some of the admin work that I have to do or meditate in the morning or fall asleep at night. Brain FM is the app that I use to help me get all that stuff done, and it is fabulous. If you decide you want to try it, you can get a free trial on me, sort of. If you go to brain.fm slash innovative mindset 
and use the coupon Innovative Mindset, you can get 20% off. And because I'm an affiliate, if you do that, I might get a little bit of change back too. And I will never recommend a product I'm not wholly behind. So I I promise you, it, this is a product that I love. The app is great. And what else do I want to say? I want to say that if you are liking these episodes, particularly me reading the audiobook, because it's not, I'm never going to make it for sale on Amazon. Uh, I'm only doing this podcast, and then I'll probably put it in my shop on my website that you'll be able to buy the audiobook. But if you want it for free, this is the time to do it. Listen to the podcast episodes and get your book for free. And if you're liking it, I would love it if you would review the show. It would really be great. Uh, it would really mean a lot to me if you were to take the time to uh, leave what you believe, right? <laughs> oh, I like that. I didn't didn't know I was going to rhyme that. It would be great if you would take the time to leave what you believe. All righty. This is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Innovative Mindset Podcast. Until next time, reminding you that innovation means that you need to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2021. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you.